Hi, and welcome to the Working Differently in Extension podcast. I'm Bob Birch. Great to have you along for today's show as we welcome Justin Thomas uh, to the program. Justin's a family and consumer science uh, agent at the University of Tennessee Extension in Bradley County. He's also the host uh, of Blue Ribbons and Boots, a podcast for extension agents by extension agents. Welcome to the podcast, Justin. Hey, thanks, Bob. I'm glad to be on. So um, there's so many things I want to talk to you about. Let's, I'm thinking about where to start. Um, and I want to get to the podcast because that's sort of how we got connected. And th- I want to shout out to Jamie Sager, too, for uh, connecting us. Uh, Justin yes. emailed Jamie and, uh, and mentioned that he had a podcast, and uh, we connected, and, uh, and it's been great. So uh, I'll be appearing on Blue Ribbons and Boots uh, in the near future. As yes. As kind of a... It's sort of like a podcast exchange program of some kind. <laughs> yes, that's a great, great way to term it. <laughs> um, so we'll get to the podcast stuff definitely, but but I do want to talk about some of the other stuff that you're involved in. Um, how'd you get started doing the community cable show? Uh, Share free with Justin T. Um, I think you're in a different county office at that time, but uh, I, I found that really interesting when I found uh, your article about that on Journal of Extension. Well, uh, not to be, uh, not to downplay it or anything like that, but I was kind of voluntold. I missed a meeting. <laughs> and so I try not to miss very many meetings anymore. Um, so, so literally the health department had a grant for $30,000 to do diabetes education. And they thought, what could we do? They had a new communications director at the local community college. One thing led to another. They talked about a cooking show. I didn't think anything of it. And all of a sudden I come back and they're like, hey, you're going to lead the cooking show. And I was like, why? And they're like, because none of us want to do it, and you have the personality for it. And I was like, I've never done TV, though. And they're like, well, you're going to now. And so we kind of worked through that, and uh, I didn't know what to call it. Uh, you know, we had thrown out a couple of things. We did a Facebook poll, but everything was just super cheesy. Like, we were trying way too hard. And I just said, you know what? We're, we can't do that. So it was a college course. It was actually – integrated into their syllabus um, as, as part of their experiential learning with actually directing, producing, and filming. And so we walked through that, and I said, what do you guys think? And uh, they're like, Justin T., that's got a good ring to it. Let's do something with that. And I come back the next week, and they've, they've taken sort of the Pimp My Ride theme from MTV back in the early 2000s, put that music over it, and they're like, how about Sugar Free with Justin T., since it's diabetes? And I was like... That's terribly cheesy, but it's fun cheesy instead of trying too hard cheesy. So we did that, and we did uh, probably 20 episodes over a couple years, and it was just uh, a good time, and uh, we, we really just tried to do some fun, realize that we were, were cheesy, and own that, go through that, and, and get some people some recipes and let them realize, hey, you can have diabetes, but you can still eat well. You don't have to cut out everything and just eat um, – certain very bland terrible things as most people say i have a lot of uh, folks in my family who are diabetic and that's what they think that you know i can't eat anything i want so i'm just going to blow the diet anyways and it's like well you can do some some really good meals it's just got to be a little different so uh, that's something i hear about all the time is you know there are some extension folks who have uh television shows on on local tv or public television um but it seems like there's a lot of people who are like, oh, that's what we need to do is get on television. So I know this was community access, but how, like, what kind of response did you get? Did you feel like it was really, it wasn't worth the, the effort? You know, uh, at first I, I kind of wondered. I thought, you know, what have we got ourselves into? Because we spent an immense amount of time. I'm talking, we would do three recipes two days a week, and we would spend seven hours doing it because we'd prep everything and then come back and do a live prep and have one that was already done. And then you couldn't waste what you had, so you had to cook the second second one that you prepped. So I was like, man, this is just ridiculous. Well, the interesting thing is we started to have, you know, our Facebook spiked. Um, we, we started seeing some response on there and viewership. We we're like, well, that's, that's interesting. Well, then I walk in on um, one of the pig meetings. They're, they're getting ready for pig project and, and the hog show. And one of the dads grabbed me. He's like, dude, that, uh, that pork chop dish that you did is incredible i did it at home and it's awesome and i was just kind of looking and it caught me off guard because you walk into a hog meeting and you're not thinking about somebody talking about your your you know pork chop 
uh, dish there. And the dad said that, and I just kind of looked at him. And I was like, have you shared this with me? People? He's like, man, all of us watch it down at the utility board every time we see one. And I was like, that may be a good thing or bad thing. He's like, no, dude, we love it. We love it. And so, you know, it kind of had a grassroots response um, where it was government owned television uh, station and, and through the college, they didn't have any metrics. So that kind of made it hard to say, Hey, are we making an impact other than that word of mouth and people saying, Hey, we're watching and getting that viewership on Facebook. But um, once we got some of that feedback, we were like, okay, we're going to, we're going to do this. Yeah, when you bring up the the hog meeting, it, it you know it reminds me, and we talked a little bit about this uh, before when we when we met uh, about the the sort of gender issue with with your subject area, right? I mean, yes. I, I made the assumption like we were talking, I'm like, oh yeah, egg agent, right? Yeah. Uh, because there's just not very many male uh, FCS uh, agents. No, there we are few and far between, and I, I stumbled into it. Um, I tell people very honestly, I to, I chose child and family studies because I was not good at foreign language. If you can hear my thick accent, it just doesn't work. Um, I, I understand it and I can read it, but me speaking it, I would have failed miserably. So I, I narrowed it down to a few majors, and I said, you know, I, I like families. Um, I, I understand that. I can can apply it. Went with that. Ended up in an internship. And one thing led to another, um, and I, I've been fortunate enough to be work in a couple of states where there's a lot of variety. So it's not just nutrition, which is not my strong suit, but there's financial education and health education, um, leadership, volunteer management, and those are those are things that I, I thrive in. Yeah, and I mean, you've been recognized for it. Uh, you, you won a, a new extension award uh, this summer from uh, University of Tennessee Extension. Uh, were you surprised by that? I was. Um, it's a selection of pa past winners get together on a committee and choose that. And it's not anything that I put in for. And so when I got the email that said, hey, you've, you've been selected for this, uh, we'd, we'd like to recognize you at the banquet. I just kind of looked around like, did they get the right Justin Thomas? You know, I was like, all right, okay. So it, it was, it was uh, definitely a shock, but, but also an honor to, to be able to receive that award. Let's talk a little bit about uh, about the podcast. Uh, it's Blue Ribbons and Boots. Uh, how did that get started? You know, we were just messing around. Uh, my colleague, Patrick Sweat, who um, actually resigned in uh, November of 2016, the end of that, to travel the world uh, with his wife. They're going 12 months to just hardcore travel, two backpacks and a sleeping bag. Uh, we really kind of hit it off when I transferred over here. I mean, we, we kind of he and hawed real well and – and we, we got along, we had some of the same thoughts, and uh, we said, you know, we should get into some radio. And so we went to the radio station, did a couple things, and I was like, we should start a podcast because we can really let our personality loose on that. So we tried to do it county-based, and it flopped. It was terrible. Um, the, we had a good time, but it didn't reach anybody. And when I say anybody, I'm not being humble about that. It literally, there were 13 views, and I think all 13 of them were us in the office and so we were like, we, we've got to, let's just put this on the back burner. We've got something. If we've got nothing at all, we've got equipment and we can record radio shows in the office and we'll cut our losses and call it a day. So we, we continued to brainstorm and over the next six or seven months. I got to thinking and I listened to a couple of different podcasts and I thought, you know what? We don't have a ton of informal professional development other, other than conversations and other than, um, you know, meetings, or riding in the car with somebody to meetings or something like that, there's not a ton of informal professional development where we can have a conversation and just say things that may not be appropriate in an in-service or may not be appropriate in a training, and we can just talk about real rubber meeting the road and just be honest with ourselves. And so we talked about it, and we, the three of us that were kind of rolling with it, we were all on board. Um, everybody else was a little skeptical. I was like, "This, we can do something with this. And they're like, yeah, we'll try it. We're on with you. And, uh, you know, it just kind of really rapidly kind of went somewhere. Um, and so we, we've been doing that since September of 2016. And uh, with no marketing other than Facebook and word of mouth and just personal connection. And uh, we're, we're pushing, uh, we've done eight or nine episodes since September of 2016 and, and we're over 340 views um, with, with no money attached to marketing. So we were pretty proud of that. <laughs> yeah. One of the great things, I mean, you sort of have alluded to this because that was, that was where I was going with the question is one of the great things about the podcast is just how, um, 
uh, in the most positive way, loose it is, right? How relaxed it is. And it sounds like that was sort of the plan from the start. Um, and that was what I was going to ask about. Was, you know, was there a lot of thought put into that or is it just how it evolved naturally? Um, I think we just took our relationship and hit record mm -hmm. uh, is, is what happened there. Um, and, and the intention was to be loose. I mean, it was, I, I tell, I tell anybody that, that is live with me in the room or with me recording, I say, listen, this is not to be, meant to be rigid. I don't want you reading from a publication. Uh, I want you to just be you and just be natural in the moment. Like we were having a conversation over lunch or over dinner um, or wherever that may be. And let's just have a conversation. Let's laugh. Let's, let's rib ourselves a little bit. You know, if we've got to make a joke or we said something ridiculous, let's just own it and laugh about it. So the intention was to be loose because uh, you know, sometimes we get a little too uptight, uh, not just an extension, but, <laughs> but in life in general. And so the idea was, you know, let's just have fun. We're going to be in the car anyway as extension professionals, so why not have something to laugh at? If if somebody can come up and say, "Man, that you all are idiots," and it's hilarious, but I also get something out of it, then we've won. We've won. Yeah. So, how have guests reacted to that? Because you do, you mentioned that. You know, we tend to, you know, I were told. I mean, at least in, in my organization, like there are. Uh, there are guidelines for professionalism and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and sometimes you're rubbing up against that. So, how, so is it difficult sometimes to like get an extension agent to talk about uh, their haunted uh, extension office instead of their program that they have coming up? It, it can be, it can be. Um, it, it just depends. And, and I try to uh, make sure that there's at least a semblance of a personal relationship or personal connection before having somebody on or at least having a phone conversation with them and saying, Hey, you know, just getting them loose. So they're not walking into something expecting a very strict, rigid environment and saying, Hey, we're just going to have a good time. We're going to, we're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to talk about it. Um, and you know, we've tried to be honest on, on, on the front about that and say, you know, not every episode is going to be something deep it may be the haunting at the extension office where we just kind of chuckle and say, glad I don't work there. <laughs> <laughs> With the elevator going up and down and all that. That was, that was pretty crazy. Listen, there was a spot where she was talking about the secretary and her grandkids and seeing the doctor. And listen, and when I, when I listen to that, I still get cold chills and my hair stands up and I'm like, no, I will not work there. I will get another job. <laughs> But that was a great episode. What, what, other than that one, uh, you know, in the, I think you guys are like nine episodes now or something like that. Um, are there, are there ones that, that stick out? I know the series of ones that you did on mentorship are, are, are really great. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that one uh, was intended to be one episode. And so again, uh, my lifestyle, I just live flexibly <laughs> just all the way around. I, I'm pretty loosey goosey. Um, and so uh, actually Peggy Powell from Kentucky is retired. She had worked there for 44 years. We ended up having like a 55 minute recorded conversation. And I was like, okay, there's a lot of gold here, but there is no way. My goal is to be at 20 to 23 minutes. And I said, like, there's no way we get this, this stuff in in 23 minutes. And so we decided to break it up in three segments and, and it actually themed itself that way through the conversation. Ironically, it wasn't, slated to be like that but it just happened um but peggy brings 44 years of experience i mean she had two years at the state level but the other 42 were in the same county um serving diligently and uh, very well respected and so it just turned out to be a really good conversation um through that and so we were excited about what we got from it um and, and it turned out well so are there things about the podcast format that or the medium i guess maybe is a better way to put it that um that you think are particular you know that have a particular advantage like you know why not do this uh in you know blog posts why not do this as video well uh i've been told by many people i have the gift of gab <laughs> my wife in particular uh, she's very quiet and i'm not we can't go to walmart without seeing 10 people that i know and so she's you know it's just one of those things that, you got to capitalize on what your gift is. I'm not a great writer. I can write, but it's not my gift. It's not what I excel at. Um, and I particularly don't enjoy it to, <laughs> to be honest. And so um, I don't think I can convey the, the passion for professional development 
through a blog post or through a Facebook post or, or things like that. Um, and so with, with this, it, it makes it a little more easy to uh, convey my personality uh, through that and say, listen, this is not something I'm doing because I'm told to. This is not something I'm doing because it's part of a plan. This is really a side pet project. Um, and a, as it's kind of gone and as it's evolved over this last part of 2016, I've had to kind of communicate that with some administrators and stuff because I've gotten a few questions. And I'm like, so people are questioning uh, from the state level. And I just want to make sure that you all realize I'm not trying to step on any toes or claim that I'm a guru. Uh, so just so everybody's aware, I do this because it's a passion. Um, it doesn't doesn't hurt when the assistant dean was on your uh, master's thesis committee and it was about professional development as well so it, it helps it helps there as well um, but it's just a spot where I find that uh, I can give the most passion to it uh, is it time consuming more than a blog probably um, but it, it's it's also really fun and it's different um, and, and we need a little bit of different in extension I mean you're the title of your show is working differently and we do need some different things. And it seems like there might be a little bit of momentum behind the podcast idea. Um, I don't know, you know, hard to tell nationally, but it seems like I'm getting a few more questions about it. Are, are people in your state asking you about, you know, that actual idea of podcasting? Um, some are. Uh, we, we did a presentation at, uh, we have a professional development conference for our family consumer science agents every couple of years. And I was asked to do a session on podcasting. Um, and there were a lot of questions that come up. You know, people are interested in it, but they don't know how to do it. Or they want it to be like being on the radio or being on a television news segment. And they don't understand it. Or they're trying to find their niche. And, you know, at the time I presented, we were relaunching and, and redoing everything. And I said, listen, we thought we had it figured out with a, a county-based approach. It may work in your county, but it did not work in ours. So, you know, if you feel like you've got a following enough to do it, knock it out. Otherwise, you know, this is this is the approach we're taking. Right. <clears throat> so, one of the main ways that uh, it, it, you know you mentioned it with the with the community access uh, cable show too. Um, one of the main ways that you've sort of put out there to promote uh, Blue Ribbons and Boots is the Facebook page. Um, is there a reason that you chose that over other channels to, to try and, and promote? Um, well, you know, just uh, being observant, uh, I'm, I use Facebook quite a bit. I'm not what you would consider a lurker, but I'm also not an every hour, every day poster. So I'm kind of in between. I'll post something every now and again or share something funny or relevant. But you see a lot of times during breaks of extension meetings or if you're riding in the car with people or if you're at a uh, overnight conference or something people are on Facebook they're taking pictures and putting them on Facebook so it's like why not go where people are at instead of trying to drive people to where we want them to go let's just go where they're at right and so that's that's kind of the avenue we've taken it's a little slow on there um, you know because uh, we wanted the the show title to be kind of catchy and different and so some people are having a hard time understanding what blue ribbons and boots are, even though we've given out blue ribbons and 4-H for a hundred years. And most of us at one point or another have worn boots to work <laughs> during the day because of the nature of our job. And so uh, we wanted to be catchy and representative of who we are um, as opposed to the Bradley County extension podcast or, you know, the professional development podcast, because that, I, you know, it'd be like, Oh, all right, fantastic, wonderful. And so we wanted to just be something that, that represented the essence of who we are. And it's not just the posts or not just the podcast recordings that you've shared on there. Um, there's their thoughts behind, you know, the little videos or the, the, pic, the photos, the kind of behind the scenes stuff that, you, that you've shared on there. Yeah, just to uh, give people a glimpse into what we're doing, uh, we, we joke a lot on the podcast about where we record at. There's an office that hasn't been occupied for probably 10 years. Um, we call it the bug office because it's where all the bugs that get dropped off 
that don't get identified hang out at um, and any boxes that may or may not have been displaced. And so we just kind of joke about it. We have to turn all the lights off. So if it's dark outside, we're laying in the dark, you know, just trying to record a podcast by the light of the computer because the lights buzz. Um, so we're just trying to say, hey, listen, we're not in a big studio. We don't have a million dollars behind this thing. We don't even have five hundred dollars behind this we're just like you all with a couple of microphones and we're just trying to share so it kind of gives people that glimpse of oh you know this this may not be that hard to do something different do, do you see anything uh significantly changing with the podcast with patrick uh you know going across, you know around the world um with his his lovely wife um other than other than our bromance being broken, the, 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 I, bromance, <laughs> the bromance is over. No, I don't see. Uh, I, I think some of that um, give and take between hi, he and I will will be missed both uh, by me personally and with the conversation piece. Um, our four H agent is is on board with it, and and I'm trying to get her a little more comfortable with the with the give and take. But otherwise, we are uh, we're still going to roll with it, and actually, but between some of the connections we've made over the past month, we've actually branched out in some States we really never anticipated uh, connecting with between you and Jamie Sager and, and a couple of other folks. It's just kind of been like, well, okay then <laughs> it, it just kind of rolled in, into a spot we didn't anticipate, and, but, but in a good way. Um, so I think between uh, his, his and I give and take that, that will be missed. <clears throat> and, and we'll have to figure a little bit of that out. But otherwise, I think we're, we're gaining some things as we're losing some things as well. So it kind of kind of works itself out in the grand scheme of it all. You know, and you're, uh, you have a relatively short time in, in extension, I guess, especially with some of our, our colleagues who maybe have, have been in extension for 20 and 30 and 40 years uh, in, some, in some cases. Um, from, from your view, what has been the key to you sort of being able to be so innovative and maybe you don't think of yourself that way. Maybe, don't, maybe nobody does, but, but you've done a lot of different things between the, the cable show and some of the programs that you've been recognized for and, the, and now the podcast. What, what's been the key to that? Do you think? I think just capitalizing on opportunities. Um, I think a lot of times in, in extension from, from folks I've seen both working in Kentucky and Tennessee, we were comfortable with what we know. And sometimes it's really hard for us to say, let's capitalize on a new opportunity or let's even try because we're afraid of failure, um, both as human beings and as professionals. Because if we have to report that we failed at something, that means what did we waste time? Did, were, we, were we just out dancing around in the rain? You know, what were we doing? But sometimes failure is what leads us to large success and large impact in programming. And so, you know, just looking at those things and saying, okay, is this a failure that we need to recognize this method is off the table forever or at least for a long time because it just didn't work or did we fail in how we approached it? And so I just look for those opportunities and I say, listen, I, I communicate it with, with our leadership as well. If there's something that's different that not a lot of people are doing, I say, hey, just want you to know I'm trying this. It may fail. I'm not devoting all my time to it, but there's a little more time than usual devoted to it. Um, if it fails, it fails. Just want you to know this is what we're going for and what we're trying. If you don't think it's a good thing, then we'll do it in the later in the afternoon of the days <laughs> and maybe in the nights and weekends, but we're still going to try it. And if it fails, it fails. Um, and if it doesn't, then maybe we strike gold or we, we find silver or whatever it may be and we, we roll with it. So we just, we can't be afraid of uh, change. Um, change only occurs when the pain to stay the same is less than the pain to change. And so until we get that pain to change, we're never going to change, but we've got to realize opportunities are catalyst to change. Justin, where can folks find uh, Blue Ribbons and Boots? <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me sorry um you can find it on itunes you sub subscribe on itunes at blue ribbons and boots you can find us on our facebook page blue ribbons and boots and then also if you're if you're an android user and you don't have itunes you, or a podcast app you can actually find us on spreaker.com or the spreaker app and that's uh, blue ribbons and boots on that channel as well and uh, if if you just want to listen on facebook to give it a try before you subscribe then uh, you can go to our Blue Ribbons and Boots page, and you can click play on one of those links, and that works just as well for you. 
And we will uh, post all those links in the show notes for Working Differently Extension. So look for those there as well. Justin Thomas, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, I'm glad to be here. And just one, one key note there. Um, a lot of people give me a hard time about our intro and exit music. And they're like, where did you get it? That is a good friend of mine. His name is, he goes by J Roy is his rapper name, but he's just a good old country boy from East Tennessee. And, uh, he wrote, wrote and produced those songs and said, Hey, you guys tear, tear them up. Cause I'm, I'm going a different direction. He's going to be an accountant. He went from rapper <laughs> to accountant. So did he, uh, did he do that after listening to the living the dream uh, episode. I don't think so. I think he did it before. <laughs> So that's how we got uh, royalty-free, awesome music there, folks. <laughs> well, that, that's great to share. And a uh, reminder, you know, our theme music uh, comes from Jibendo, uh, and uh, you can find that there. That's Creative Commons licensed theme music that uh, you hear on Working Differently in Extension. Uh, thanks so much again, Justin. Justin Thomas is a family and consumer science agent in Bradley County for the University of Tennessee Extension, and he's the host of Blue Ribbons and Boots a podcast for extension agents by extension agents. Thanks for listening to the Working Differently and Extension podcast. I'm Bob Birch. As always, check us out on Twitter. It's WDNEXT. Uh, you can find us on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash working differently, and all the show notes at Bob Birch. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great day.